This week on Maker Update, making your own Alexa-powered Billy Bass, the rise of the modular swarm bots, DIY candy dispensers, 3D printed Thanksgiving accessories, and a good excuse for a blowtorch. It's Wednesday, November 9th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another episode of Maker Update. This past week, we reached the 1,000 subscriber mark on the Maker Project Lab YouTube channel. I'm so excited. I couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys really helped me out by liking and sharing and giving me feedback on these videos. And now we're at 1,000 subscribers. It's so cool. I'm really excited to see where we can take this next. All right? Now, let's move on to the project of the week. I'd be surprised if you didn't already catch Brian Kane's video of a Billy Bass singing fish hacked to work as a voice activated Amazon Echo. Alexa, what's the weather? Currently in Cambridge, it's 45 degrees with showers. It went viral with the help from Reddit, The Verge, Gizmodo, and a bunch of others, like a whole bunch of others. Now, according to his Facebook page, it turns out that the project was made as an in-class demo for a course he teaches at the Rhode Island School of Design. Unfortunately for me, that makes it all the more unforgivable that he didn't share or even vaguely explain his work. Whatever his reasons, it doesn't matter to us, right? Because as makers, we can make a pretty educated guess on what's going on. We had a Raspberry Pi Zero Alexa project back in episode two that gets you about halfway there, but because this is seemingly a case where the Billy Bass is activated just by voice, you'll also need to reference Atmit Jutwani's tutorial on hands-free Alexa over on hackster.io. As for linking up the voice with the built-in fish flopping, I think that's just some old-fashioned hardware hacking linking up the existing electronics in the fish with a GPIO pin on a Raspberry Pi. And I say all this because, in spite of all the hoopla, as of today, there is yet to be an instructable on how to make an Alexa Billy Bass, and this is a wrong that needs to be righted in the universe. And now that I have my 1,000 subscriber maker army, I feel like this is exactly the kind of thing that we can tackle, right? In the show notes, I'm including links to the Pi Zero Alexa project from episode two, the hands-free Alexa Pi tutorial I mentioned, and one of several guides I found on hijacking the basic animatronics of Billy Bass. Now, if you successfully make one of these and put a guide online, send me a note and I will compensate you with some stickers and a shout out on the show. You'll be the maker hero of the week, all right? But the reason all of us should give this a shot is because how awesome will it be to give this as a gift for the holidays? Oh my God, can you imagine how cool it would be to give a Billy Bass Alexa to someone in your family? Also, just a heads up to any tech journalists out there, if you're looking for a fresh angle on a maker project story like this, talk to a maker or talk to me, Donald at makerprojectlab.com, because I guarantee you the title that's gonna do better on a story like this than Man Hacks Alexa Into Fish is How to Hack Alexa Into a Fish. People are curious. All right, now for news. Last Friday, Hackaday announced the winner of their annual Hackaday Prize. The winner is the team behind Ditto, a cute, wormy, modular robot system designed for search and rescue. As the grand prize winners, the team gets $150,000 in a residency at the Supply Frame Design Lab in Pasadena, California. In related news, this week I caught a post by Nick Normal over on Adafruit's blog about this open source, open hardware swarm robotic system. The idea was developed in partnership between students at Stanford University and INRIA, University Paris Saclay in France. Just like the micro drones I showed in last week's video, these little tabletop robots are created using inexpensive parts and a lightweight 3D printed shell. But unlike the drones, this project really lays out every component and line of code you'll need to replicate the entire thing. As of just a few weeks ago, they even uploaded the Gerber manufacturing file for the printed circuit board design. So you can take it and run off a small batch for your own robot army. The short version of what's going on here is that an overhead projector is mapping a very subtle pattern onto the surface of the table, which the robots are able to decode to figure out their position. A wireless transmitter off to the side then tells each of them where to go. It's neat, and it kind of reminds me of those enchanted bits of soot from Spirited Away. I think it would be so cool to see a big table of these at a Maker Faire. All right, I also wanted to mention one other project this week, probably the only realistically achievable project here for most of us, over on Thingiverse, check out the Damn Damn Candy Dispenser by Max 7th. The 3D printed design is made for M&Ms and presumably uses some standard type of glass jar. There's a file included to print your own jar, so maybe you could just print that out and take it with you shopping and find an upgrade at the grocery store. The instruction on this is practically non-existent, but the files look good and the photos lead me to believe that the results are worth the effort. 
Also, it's called the Dam Dam, so it's understandable if there's a little trial and error built in, right? Speaking of 3D printing, last week, my friend and 3D printing guru Matt Stoltz found himself in the unfortunate position of losing the collar stays in his shirt right when he was heading off to a wedding. What he did, as you can imagine, is 3D print out his own. The design file for these collar stays by Hackstasy has been on Thingiverse since 2013, doing its part to keep our collars perky. Now maybe you can use it to save a collar somewhere. I also noticed that Thingiverse has updated their Thanksgiving collection, which is mostly made up of table decorations and napkin ring holders, but it could be a fun way to nerd up your Thanksgiving. Over on Hackaday, there's a nice little piece celebrating the virtues of brazing aluminum, which is kind of a cross between welding and soldering that aluminum can uniquely get away with. The article includes a great introduction video by David Picciuto at Make Something, who integrates the technique into furniture design. It's a cool, low-stakes metalworking technique to add into your bag of tricks. It's also a great excuse to buy a blowtorch. I mean, that's one of the best reasons to be a maker, right? No one asks you why you own a blowtorch. I also want to give a special shout out to my friend and colleague, Gareth Branwin, who last week wrote about this show on the excellent Boing Boing blog. That piece really sent this show past that 1,000 subscriber mark and it meant a lot to me. I know I've said this already, but thank you, Gareth. Maker Fairs, there are four Maker Fairs happening this weekend. All of them are in the US. You've got one in Redding, California, Akron, Ohio, Poughkeepsie, New York, and Houston, Texas. If one of those is near you, you owe it to yourself to go out and mingle with your kind. All right, that's it for this episode of Maker Update. Remember, I really wanna see those Billy Bass Alexa projects. Put your heads together and figure something out so that we can get Santa's elves cranking on those, all right? And everything I've mentioned in this show is linked to in the show notes. So you can find those on this video or every Wednesday morning. You can also find them on the homepage, makerprojectlab.com. I also could really use your likes and shares and comments. Those are the best ways that I have to gauge whether or not these videos are working, okay? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.